Now, I want to talk, I don't talk about Trump often on this channel because I can't offer anything unique, but I do want to kind of take a victory lap a little bit here because if, if, if I recall when I was covering the campaign, I said, I even told people, his supporters, do you really think this billionaire plutocrat is going to really, really change NAFTA or really, really uh, make sure the TPP doesn't happen? I didn't. I told you so. Headline, Trump renegotiation of NAFTA starting to look a lot like TPP. And some dudes did some video of that. I did a, co a coverage of that months ago, criticizing me, saying I was misrepresenting Trump on trade. <laughs> Right. Like, dude, like. <laughs> you know, they're going to always come out of nowhere. Uh, I, I, told, what you I told you so. I told uh, you uh, so. I'll read you real quick. On the same day the Republican bid to overturn Obamacare failed, the Trump administration embarked on a bigger quest, resetting a global trade consensus, consensus that has preserved for over four decades. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Leith Leithizer released a, a set of negotiating objectives for the North American Free Trade Agreement. Under fast-track rules adopted in 2015, the administration must present these non-binding objectives to Congress before it can enter into negotiations. Essentially, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but essentially, the starting negotiation is pretty much adopting quite a lot of language from the TPP, which Trump railed against on the, on the, on the campaign trail. Uh, so if the renegotiation is NAFTA, and I give credit to Jenk, he said this might happen, uh, it seems like he's trying to renegotiate NAFTA to become more like the provisions that were in the TPP. I'm not going to BS you. I don't know the exact uh, language, or I'm not an expert on the nitty gritty of these trade deals, but I will say uh, I've read multiple stories saying the NAFTA renegotiation is looking a lot like TPP and other corporate written trade deals. So, not that you as our audience need to be, not need to be um, convinced that Trump is awful, but there are some Trump supporters who watch us. And they need to know, you've been conned. You've been conned. Speaking of chapter two of my book, Corporate Con Job, what? download right now, corporateconjob.com. Chapter two, how the corporate media welfare complex delivered President Trump. Download corporateconjob.com. And that was an obvious plug. Now, what do you think about this? <laughs> I mean, it's obvious. When you have corporatists in your cabinet, like the guy didn't have any core principles to begin with. So it's so easily swayed. I mean, it's not unsurprising to me. I mean, I think there were two things that progressives, some progressives thought Trump might be better on, which was hawkishness. He's now almost outpaced Obama in civilian deaths in Obama's entire term in Iraq and Syria. Uh, so yeah, hawkish, and two, trade. Oh wow, look, now he's renegotiating NAFTA to look like the TPP. Like, if, if people thought that Trump was going to be more progressive in certain areas than Hillary, it just, it, that, that's not how it shook out, and that's not how you should have thought that way, because he's a moron. He's a buffoon. If, yeah. Yeah, if anybody that is regularly on fixed propaganda, which I call as Fox News, throughout the years, mm -hmm. they have long gotten away from ever being called a liberal or a Democratic supporter and all that. Yeah. So, like, that whole idea of anyone trying to think that he was going to be out of nowhere to the left of some Democrats on some issues. It just was, I just couldn't, you just couldn't see it from what he was and how he was a devoted Fox News watcher. He believes anything on that channel mm -hmm. and anything from base conservative thought now. That is just what he is. So with him trying to then have his way on trade that is now looking like TPP, he's always going to be about affluent people. He's always going to be about rich corporate interest first and foremost and if you believe that in middle america that he was for you and was going to bring back the jobs back all the way that's why they are all laughing at you unfortunately because the signs clearly show that he wasn't going to do that i mean the beginning with the carrier deal that carrier oh, wait, deal, wait, wait, wait. Um, stop 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 yeah. this was my this was my next segue mm -hmm. carrier corporation plans to lay off 300 employees yep. at its indianapolis furnace uh, factory uh, uh, thursday well not ha ha they're getting laid off oh shit uh, sorry yes and the, Trump. <laughs> and the timing is likely to raise some eyebrows the previous announced layoffs coincide to the day with the six-month anniversary of donald trump's president presidency they are part of a deal Trump struck with the company in December to prevent deeper job cuts at the plant. Go. Yeah, on. I mean, that exactly just shows it right there with how he was championing it, with how some people, of course, in centrist cable media was like, oh, 
he's trying to show that he's actually doing something like are Democrats going to give him credit on this and all this nonsense and yet again it was a fraudulent thing because it was just all about preserving corporations and them getting the breaks that they think they're going to get from him. Let, let me also just point out, this is a... What? Sorry, I just want to make sure, I want to make sure they have all the evil. Yeah, yeah. The terminations of the first wave of about 630 planned before the end of the year as the company shifts work to Mexico. Oh, well, can they get over the wall? I, mean, I, might, I don't know. That's a good question. So uh, this is an <laughs> underreported study that I think is really important because... Uh, if you guys know what's happening in Greece, you know that the United States does not want to become Greece. There's a ton of unemployment among the youth. My my, one, my best friend from high school was just there and was robbed, like in her wow, in her Airbnb. Yeah, like masked guy, like crazy, all their stuff. Anyway, uh, but that's anecdotal. But it can, apparently, um, Trump's tax reform plan would push the U.S. below Greece in income inequality. So if you know what's going on in Greece, you know that that's essentially anarchy in the United States, what's, what, what would happen there. So again, this is from The Guardian, I really encourage you guys to read it, but it would push the US below Greece in the Income Inequality Index. Also, I've read this on actually Vox, but the tax cuts from Trump that he's proposing, the uh, poorest Americans would get $40 in tax breaks. Oh, sounds good. The richest ones, $940,000. So that's what this kind of study is talking about. The income inequality is just going to widen because this isn't about serving America for this piece of uh, food. It's dash, a, dash, dash, dash. It's about like ravaging the federal government for his friends and for himself. And in the short term, the rest of us be damned. That's what it is.